Yo, 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 welcome back again today, guys. So today we're going to be talking about Afro-Mexicans. Afro-Mexicans were brought to Mexico from West Africa by European Spanish slavers and explorers from Spain. From the 1500s to the 1800s, more than 200,000 West Africans were brought to Mexico and many died on the trip to Mexico. These Africans were brought to the port of Veracruz in Mexico. After reaching the port, the Spanish Europeans would sell them inland. This was at one time the biggest area for Afro-Mexicans, but now many live in Costa Chica region on the southeastern side of the country in other parts of Mexico. During the three centuries that European Spaniards ruled over Mexico, many Africans enslaved would die from harsh labor and bad living conditions. Mexico actually for a time, in the early 1600s, had the largest population of enslaved Africans in Central, South, and North America. With numerous industries Africans were used in, many Africans mixed with other indigenous populations. Like other Africans throughout the Americas, many Afro-Mexicans would escape to the mountains and create communities. Gaspar Yanga, one of the most famous escaped slaves, established the most significant free community in the state of Veracruz in 1570. This community evaded the Spanish for almost 40 years and is also known as San Lorenzo de las Negros. In 1932, this community was renamed in honor of Yanga. Afro-Mexicans contributed everything in the War of Independence from Spain and Spanish rule for Mexico. It is said that Afro-Mexicans in the Mexican army were the first to initiate the independence struggle. The Dark Army, or a sector of Mexican army during the Independence War, had many revolutionaries in it. One of the Afro-Mexican revolutionaries, General Vicente Guerrero, became the second president of Mexico. Afro-Mexicans also helped develop the country in many industries such as silver mines, farming, labor, and sugar plantations. Other influences to Mexico through music also shapes modern Mexican music as well. The famous song, known all around the world as La Bamba or La 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 Bamba, has African origins. This belongs to the well-known carocho music genre. Even with contributions to the country, Afro-Mexicans were not involved in country politics. Afro-Mexicans also dealt with being considered a foreigner in their own country. Migrating to other parts of the country, local populations would think Afro-Mexicans were from Cuba or Belize and that they were immigrants. Mexico, in 2005, released its first national survey on discrimination in Mexico and left out Afro-Mexicans. In the same year, stamps were released of the 1940 comic book, Mimen Penguin, with over-exaggerated African features. Many African-American civil rights groups called out this exaggeration and noted that Africa was a continent with many looks and many features not just big noses and big lips. The Mexican government replied and said that this was part of Mexican history and that black people in North America took this situation out of context. Many Mexicans and Afro-Mexicans in some community groups called out the Mexican government for this event. Within the same time, the government created the Third Root Program, which created TV programs to promote African history and heritage in Mexico. Veracruz has shown an uptick in Afro-Mexicans doing african influence Sun Carocho music. When leaving Veracruz, many Afro-Mexicans are still looked at as outsiders. In some occasions, Mexican army soldiers will ask Afro-Mexicans to sing the national anthem to see if they are truly from the country. Afro-Mexicans were officially included in Mexico census for the first time in 2020. So, yo guys, today we learned a bit about Afro-Mexicans. Please like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification down there so you will always get my videos. And add me on all social medias, which is Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Snapchat, and Facebook. All African Network. Each one teach one. Always love each other. Always learn from each other. And until next time, adios. Peace. One love.